name is Lisa Ortiz, and I have been voice acting for about um, two decades. Take your minds. I know, right? Crazy, right? Uh, yes, and I've been of that, about half of it. I've also been uh, voice directing and producing as well. A lot of the actors here wanted to have some um, some sort of vo voice coaching and voice direction to kind of do that. So I was going to teach them a little bit about dubbing, a little bit about straight character creation and things like that. And then also I brought regular voice sort of um, care of the voice, uh, how to change some of the things. I know a lot of stuff that we do when you've been working here doing this for a long time, there's a lot of vocal stress that happens to people. Um, like playing video games, shouting, doing all this kind of stuff. And I wanted to teach them different ways that they could use their voice so that they're not doing strenuous stuff. So a lot of it was technical nuts and bolts for people who were uh, voice actors who were just starting out and also for people who had been seasoned, uh, seasoned voice actors for years, which was kind of, it, so it was cool. So it was a really big game. We were, it was, it started off as a smaller thing and it turned into a full, it was a full eight hour workshop. So we covered pretty much all the bases on there. We actually had a lot of stuff planned that we were trying to go in. I had people, we did, for the first part of the workshop, what we did, we did a bunch of warm-up, we did a, we, we sort of worked with the voice and brought stuff out with that way. I had beginners, I had a couple of students who had never taken a class before. There's so much work here and there's so much going on, but there's not necessarily a huge amount of people who have been, who, who can coach or who direct. So a lot of times they're doing a lot of jobs and a lot of work without without that benefit. So I had people who just started and I also had some of the top people who are working in Seoul right now who were in the class as well, which was kind of, which was a fun thing. The first half of this section is going to be here. It is recorded, that way you guys can have your uh, playback and listen to it. And then of course the second half is going to be in the booth and that is going to be the quality, uh, sound quality that you can use for whatever samples you want. Trying to make him, trying to make him naive, happy, excited over there, but also just sort of Almost like, I wanted them to have uh, technical skills. I most of them, when I come in, I could do I could do acting things. I could do that, but I wanted them to walk away with the technical skills of dubbing, how they could go in, how they could improve the technique of what they were doing, and emotionally kind of it, uh, give better performances that way. And I also wanted people who had been who have been doing a lot of work, who are seasoned pros, to be able to walk out with tricks and tips and things that I've learned over my career. How many people can sing, and it does not have to include well in the sentence? Okay. <laughs> All right. So then we're just going to do some vocalizations. We did a survey beforehand, so I got questions from people. So people would tell me what they wanted to learn, and that was one of the main things. Some people wanted to improve their performances. Some people wanted coaching and feedback. Uh, some people wanted to work on character voices, placement, like how do you, if you're a 45-year-old man, how do you sound like a 12-year-old, you know, things like that. Some people wanted to improve their technique, and that's something that I do specifically. I also teach at, um, besides all my years of directing and voice acting, I also teach at NYU. I do workshops on dubbing, and I do all this other stuff, too. So that was some of the stuff that I brought up. But that, so it was a little bit for everybody. What I really wanted was to give hands-on work to people so that they would leave having learned skills to, to perform better. You know how much you know when you start working with people, so I, I felt really thankful because I was really able to give people stuff that they didn't get otherwise. Like, it's, um, we had one of the guys, um, Kim was in the class, who's one of the top people who's here, and so he, like, having him sort of, like, smile and laugh when, <laughs> when I gave him some adjustments were really cool. But um, I also learned a lot about the, the voiceover community out here, like, how much, how much stuff there is to do, how much work. This is a really vibrant community out over here, and uh, everybody's really super cool. Like, a lot of the expats and a lot of people who are doing stuff here are really, are really cool. But one of the biggest takeaways that I got is, um, uh, was that there's just a lot of, there's, um, no matter how long you've been doing this, there's always so much that you can learn. Uh, just keep doing it. Um, a lot of the people, that's one of the things that's cool about the solo mark in general, is like a lot of people get thrown in and they're working and working and doing a lot of stuff and that's how, and you build up a lot of skills that way. They still want to learn about acting, they still want to learn about performing, they still, you still have to learn about how to use your voice and how to actually be able to do things so you're not damaging yourself. So, so go out and do it, it's something that you can do, but just make sure that you're also taking care of yourself and your instrument and have fun because it's one of the best jobs you can have.